We're going to talk about landscaping with herbs today, whether it be in pots for your patios and grand vistas in your gardens. And we're at the home of the Humphreys in Nashville, Tennessee at Foxwood Gardens. Well, we're entering your herb garden, Judith. Yes, ma'am. Tell is, me all about this. This is what I call a courtyard. Okay. My courtyard garden. And you'll notice that there is a border of winter savory around all of these beds. That is the most magical herb for putting in soup. It changes a bland soup into flavorful. It's like, now, wow. Now, Judith, do you cut and dry this as well for your winter usage? Yes, I do. One of the things that helps let the winter savory live longer is it needs occasional really hard pruning. You can see right here this is old wood and even though it has growth on it eventually that's going to die out. So you cut it right at the juncture above the new growth and you do that to all of the old stems and then you can keep your little hedge growing forever. What's in your pots here? Eucalyptus. Bought that at the Herb Society plant sale this year. And I like to dry that just for looks. It's not culinary. Um, so I'm hoping. And does not winter over in this area. No, but I got a greenhouse. Okay. I planted it in a pot. <laughs> and you have lots greenhouse. of time, some steppable time and some other times. Oh, I have been working on the creeping time forever. Uh -huh. There's a red creeping, uh, the pink creeping, there's a little bit of white creeping, and a lot of it's already bloomed. The white is yep, still there's here. there's someone, mm -hmm. someone right there. Mm -hmm. In this bed right over here, mm -hmm. some of it just coming to a bloom is a French thyme, an English thyme, and a lemon thyme. And you have your silver mound artemisia. Yes, ma'am, and it opens up and you just have to uh, bear with it. I see you have lavender here, Judith. What kind is this? This one happens to be phenomenal, uh, which it really is phenomenal. It is a relatively new hybrid, and it winters over, for me, better than some of the other varieties. But I have learned from some of my other herby friends that it not necessarily does that in everybody's garden. And that's a good point. Uh, gardening, you have to make the plant happy, but you also have to make the gardener happy. That's one of my strong philosophies in gardening. So Judith, I want you to explain to everyone that you can grow herbs in pots for those that don't have garden area that just have patios. Yes, ma'am. What do we have here in these pots? I, the first pot here that has just started to bloom is the Tennessee coneflower. Mm -hmm. And a lovely friend gave me a sprig or two when it was on the endangered list. Mm -hmm. Thank goodness it's not on the endangered list anymore. And then I've got just a regular geranium for color. Again, this is about landscaping mm -hmm. with herbs. These are not, well, the mint is edible, but the others are not. And even though you have the scented geraniums here, it's important for our viewers to know that they are not grown for the flowers. Even though they do flower, the flower is minimal. No, they're, they're grown for what? They're grown for their smell, for their wonderful leaf structure, their color. I just think they are you can so flavor sugars, delightful. Pound cakes. Uh, better cooks stuff. than me can. <laughs> <laughs> but I know that they have culinary uses. Um, the apple mint to me is one of the prettiest mints. It has this fuzzy texture, mm -hmm. which is just so delightful. And I see you also have some spearmint in pots as well. And it's important to remember that we grow mint, or we should grow mint, in pots because it's very, very, very invasive. Yes, Sends those runners out. All right, Judith, I call this one thing and you call it something else. I call it red vein sorrel and you call it? Bloody dock. Neither one of us have the Latin name, but it's okay. Uh -huh. It is an edible herb, but I grow it for its landscaping properties. Mm -hmm. It has a gorgeous red vein in it, and I think that's where your mm -hmm. name comes from. Um, and sorrel can get bitter too if you don't cultivate the young leaves. So the young mm -hmm. leaves are great, tender in salads. And right behind here, this wonderful mist. <laughs> Loving the mist. You said you just let this reseed, and that's why it's so prolific right yes, here. Yes, yes. It's wispy and it's wild, and I think it's a, a great it's, addition. It's a, it, this is a huge bed, so it can take something growing wild. And your yarrow is going to give you really dramatic show here in another about a week or so, isn't it? Exactly. 
Judith, I want to talk about this beautiful strip here you have going on. It's not only showy, it's full, it's lush. You have the yellow primrose. Yes, which I call sundrop. I think the reason why I like the yellow ones the best is because they're, they're sturdy, they're upright, they're not lazy. These tend to be droopy. As, as you can see, but if you're growing them among other things, mm -hmm. and this is a King Alfred daisy back there, mm -hmm. they are more upright. And this is my lovely balloon flower. I thought I had lost it. And so what is this beautiful purple thing here? Oh, this is the spider wart. Uh, it's a love-hate relationship. If you don't cut it back soon enough, it's going to seed absolutely everywhere. And I didn't cut it back last year. So I can't tell you how much of it I've pulled up. But I've also learned, and I think this is a pretty neat trick, if you cut it off, after one is almost bloomed out at the next joint mm -hmm. or sometimes on down here. Uh -huh. See, that will produce a bloom stalk. So I do that to prolong the season. So yes. maybe I was too good to it. That's a good... <laughs> <laughs> maybe so. I actually started getting interested in flowers and herbs when I was pregnant with my second child. And I started reading every magazine, every book I could get my hand on. And then when I learned about the Herb Society, not that many years ago, mm -hmm. I knew how to grow herbs, but I didn't know how to use them. So the Herb Society has taught me. And, and that's the Nashville Herb yes, Society. Yes, Nashville Herb Society. And there is an Herb Society of America. And the Nashville unit is part of that big national group. Great. It's a wonderful place. There's so much to learn. Can I tell you about my citrus trees? Sure. <laughs> this is a Myers lemon, and what is unique about this particular citrus tree is that you can find all three stages of growth. First, you have the blossom, and then you'll have a little bud, mm -hmm. which will grow like this. Mm -hmm. You see some others over here. And then... And then there's a full-grown one. Yes, that's almost ripe enough to pull. And the arugula, another herby friend, Rob Stein, gave me this. It is self-seeding and it comes back every year. And so I'm not gonna cut those blossoms. I'm just gonna let it keep seeding and see what we can do with it. I just love my garden. Well, Judith, I wanna tell you, thank you so much for sharing your gardens with us and your knowledge on herbs and landscaping with herbs. It's been great, thank you. Thank you. For inspiring garden tours, growing tips, and garden projects, visit our website at volunteergardener.org or on YouTube at the Volunteer Gardener channel and like us on Facebook.